Okay, so this is a super fast um, look at the files API in TextFile um, with the command line client. Um, so we're going to look at a couple of these commands in here um, around threads and uh, adding some files to a thread. Um, so we'll start by initializing a new um, TextFile HD wallet. And let's go over to terminal. Okay, so we're going to use the first account, um, seed from the first account, and initialize textile node. And we can look at the config. Uh, it looks kind of like a IPFS config. It's just a little higher level. You can see that's the account address, which we'll talk about in a follow-up um, screencast. Um, okay, so we can tail the logs here and we'll start the daemon. Okay. So let's see here. Um, you can see some ad output down below. Um, so again, we're going to just look at threads here. Uh, so let's see okay so this, there is a post out there by carson that talks about threads um if you're curious there's a little more info there in the help command um, the thread that's added here that you can see when we look at uh, we're listing all the threads is the account thread um again we'll look more at that when we talk about re account recovery um, and adding other peers um, for the same account So what we just did there is created a, an open thread um, that's backed by the textiles um, built-in photo schema. Um, so let's look at some the schema concept here, which is really similar to transload it. Um, so we're defining what uh, we should, the, the, the node should do with incoming files. Um, so we want to save the raw file. We want some resized images um, and exif, pretty standard for um, a photos app. So this is similar to transload it um, in the in the sense that you can pass uh, one step can feed into another. Um, so the file is only ever sent once, and then we um, we can just actually cat it from IPFS and feed it into the, the other steps. So we've got these different, we call them nil endpoints, um, image, resize, exif, and uh, you can pin, um, optionally pin the entire DAG structure, um, or you can pin individual file leafs in there, um, just depends on your application. Uh, and then here's another one. This is the built-in avatar schema. This is what happens when you um, add, uh, an, an upload a new profile image. And then this this other last example, um, which we're really excited about, is uh, for the JSON mill. We call it. So this is this ingests uh, JSON documents, um, and it could be. You know, this is an example of a person, like like a contact card, um, and whatever you could define with the JSON schema spec, you could put into here, and it'll be validated as it comes in. Um, and of course, all these are by default encrypted, um, but you can, if you wanted to specify not encrypted, you could. Um, you just pass a plain text tag, but anyway, we'll, we'll be more documentation on this later. Okay, so now let's um, add some files into the thread that we just created there, the photos thread. Um, I have a directory here of horse files, horse photos, rather. Um, so we're going to walk that directory, adding, uh, it's fulfilling the schema um, for each of those files in there and we'll share each one to the thread. Um, and they'll be linked to each other in the, the uh, hash tree structure. 
So uh, each of these files um, gets a target hash that's spit out there, and that's the top level hash for each one of those files. So if you look at that, um, you can see that the schema generated those links. Um, each textile file has a F and a D link. Um, the D is for the actual data, and then the F would be the metadata, um, the index rather, of the file that was added. So these are both encrypted. Um, so if we want to look at those, we'll have to grab the keys. Uh, so we can do that with the keys command. So each each of these files got um, its own AES key. So we'll plug that in. Um, we have this browser, the uh, custom gateway on top of IPFS, just mainly for the purpose of um, just doing the decryption like this. Um, but you can imagine, event you'd probably want to do just like a client side decryption or something, but it's, this can be nice for certain use cases. So you can see we're looking at the plain text. This is um, this file came out of the image resize mill. The checksum is the, the pre encryption hash. Um, and we use that to deduplicate encrypted files um, in conjunction with a few of these other parameters. Um, the source for this one is the raw file. So you can see that's the hash of the, um, the blob data for the image. And then the media type and um, some other stuff on there. Metadata is useful for, for UIs that want to render images. So the different mills spit out different types of metadata. Um, we'll eventually be adding different types of mills for audio and probably video and whatever else it seems people want. So we can actually look at the data and um, it uh, turns out that it was actually a horse. So another thing we can do is use this um, group command and or group flag and the, the group flag will add all the files as one um, object to the thread. So if we do that, um, we're gonna it's going to really churn through the files now because they're already all in IPFS and it uses the um, deduplication, the pre-encryption to determine whether or not it's already added. And that's just local to this node. So it's not like you could tell if a file that you didn't add has already been added um, you know, via its pre-hash because this we're looking at the indexes on your local node here, which could be running on your phone or on your desktop. Um, okay, so let's look at that target, the group target. And as we expect, there's um, seven files in there now, and you can see they each have the schema generated um, links in there. And then if you look at the keys, um, there's a bunch of keys in there because they're all under the same target. Um, so so you can actually just paginate through the files like this. As you can see here, you can add comments to files, which we'll look at at some other point. Um, but yeah, you can just paginate through and, and see what's in a thread. Um, and see, I've got another node running over here. Um, and we can just, I just want to show you quickly how you can invite another peer to a thread. So. We'll grab that peer ID. Oh, that's not the right thread ID. Um, let's put the right ID in there. Okay, okay so we created um, the invite 
and you can see you can see notified the other peer they were invited to join they received the thread message um, so now we need to contact or we need to use this nodes api to actually accept the invite so we can list the current pending invites um, that looks like the one that we wanted so we can accept it with the command line here and you can see now that it's in there, it's backfilling all those files, um, pulling them from the network. Um, and when they first were added, you can see, and then you start seeing that they were the file exists where we add them, we added them as two different targets. Um, but the file itself is only referenced index once. Um, so now you can see there's two peers in there. And uh, if we wanted, we can add some more photos. We got this folder of UFO images, and we can churn through those. Okay. Well, actually, let's add them as individual updates. It's a bit more exciting to watch. Okay, so you can see all the updates there coming in. Uh, we fast forwarded. And I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, I want to do more of these. So there's plenty more to cover. Maybe next time we'll look at how to add cafes, um, which are really, it's just a textile node that um, you can use for backup um, and uh, offline messaging um, and a couple other things like that. Super useful in the mobile world. Um, but anyway, thanks for checking it out and please let us know if you try it out. Um, we'd love to hear any feedback.